All right, we're in there. We're good to go. We are live right now. So everybody, uh, welcome to the show. Great pyramid researcher, author, documentary producer, Stephen Myers. We are here. Um, so I guess we're, we're going to take this in kind of like an interview format. So I'm going to start kind of early. Um, we were talking earlier before the show. You uh, did, did you grow up here in Oregon or you grew up somewhere else? I grew up in Los Angeles, and uh, but live in Oregon now on the Oregon coast. Yeah, it's it's beautiful out here. Um, how long? How long? About how long have you lived out here? Well, I've lived out here probably thirty years or so. It seems okay. it seems like a century, but uh, <laughs> I, I consider it's been you a while. I definitely yeah, not not far little. from the ocean, about twenty miles. So it's uh, it's beautiful, beautiful I, as you know, beautiful in Oregon. Oh yeah, oh yeah, by far the best state I've ever lived in. Shout out to. Uh, Oregon for being great. Um, so, what, uh, what, growing up, what got you into the pyramids? Were you into this at a young age? Um, did something happen? Did you read a book? Something happened that just made you super interested in this, to where you wanted to start researching it and kind of, kind of go after this? Well, I have a very technical background with some technical degrees, that type of thing, and uh, I've always enjoyed technology and history. So um, studying World War II, I wasn't interested in the generals or the politics. I was more interested in the planes and the battleships and all, all of that and the submarines. Okay. So uh, I, I, I'm an amateur radio operator, first class FCC commercial uh, radio telephone license and other wow. degrees that are related to uh, technology, but uh, if a person likes history and technology, then they uh, they might look at the Great Pyramid because it's a 45-story skyscraper that was built in ancient times. So uh, back when I started, uh, I you would go to the library and to the card catalog and find a book about uh, the Great Pyramid, and uh, most of those were written by Egyptologists. So they tell a story about a big ramp and uh, that's maybe bigger than the Great Pyramid itself and workers that uh, sweat it a lot evidently and hauled stones you know, up this uh, ramp and somehow put them together and built the Great Pyramid. And I thought, uh, okay, you know, the book is in the library. And, uh, but I found out something about Egyptology that a lot of people don't realize, okay. and it's very fascinating. Uh, that they, they tell stories, but they, they don't have any demonstrations. It's never been demonstrated how they uh, achieve the, perce the precise stone cutting, and also uh, they've never demonstrated how to make a Great Pyramid casing stone, and the largest stones of the Great Pyramid are 70 tons, Wow. And Egyptology has never moved a 70-ton payload one inch. So basically so, what uh, you're saying is Egyptology is sort of like a theory, just like this show. <laughs> uh, it, 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 well, I, I wouldn't even go that far. I would say it's a hypothesis. Okay, okay. You know, or a story. They tell, they tell a, a hypothesis, but generally in the scientific method, you... Uh, Support that hypothesis with demonstrations, okay. but, but Egyptology does not do that, and they, they just declare edicts and expect us to believe them because of their authority or whatever. And that's not science; that's yeah. more like a religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so e Egyptology is uh, stagnated science that is actually in crisis because uh, a lot of people don't believe. There's stories anymore about moving 70-ton payloads without handling scars and also uh, using extreme precision stone cutting accomplished with hand tools. By handling you know, scars, all... um, are you referring so, to like when the, when the stone is carried up, uh, like, it, like scratching against the other stones, getting chipped up and that sort of thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, they have this ramp idea but uh, they haven't demonstrated it. So uh, that's why there's so much controversy about uh, the pyramids in general and Egyptology is uh, there's no uh, no demonstrations involved. So it's, uh, 
It's a science that uh, is really in crisis right now, Egyptology. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. So uh, when? Uh, how old were you? When? When was your first time you actually went to the Great Pyramids in Egypt? Well, I went in nineteen in uh, two thousand and four, okay. and did the on-site research that I conducted there and toured it and was in awe of uh, the Great Pyramid, went inside the passages and chambers, and it uh, was a, it's an amazing thing. If uh, anyone gets the chance, they should go to Egypt. It's, uh, there's no place like it on Earth, the uh, ancient monuments, the people, the culture, so it's... Uh, it, it was, was a, a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. thing. I imagine that's almost the same feeling as if you got to go to space. I, uh, I imagine Egypt, uh, I, I've seen it through the movies, I guess would be the best way to explain it, movies and TV. And when you think about it, it almost seems like, uh, like, a, like a Final Frontier kind of deal. Uh, it, like the only way to get there is through Camelback and, and that sort of kind of thing. And that's how I pictured it in my head. But I know people drive cars to the Great Pyramids. Now, um, I guess my, my next question would kind of be, what is it, what is the, the environment around the pyramids like? Was there a lot of tourists? Um, what are, what are the, the local people like um, when they see Americans coming and, and you know, doing research and, and trying to learn about this stuff? What's the, what's the whole environment like around the pyramids? Well, the Egypt, you're asking me about the Egyptian people? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They are ultra-friendly. They, all, they seem to almost all speak English. And I'm sure if I spoke German, they would all speak German or Italian. The Egyptian people have been accommodating tourists since the beginning of time, it seems like. Herodotus arrived in Egypt in the 5th century BC. And uh, he was uh, accommodated and shown, he had tour guides or priests. Okay. Whatever you want to call them. And, uh, you know, since then until now, they uh, will do anything uh, you need. And again, friendly and uh, that type of thing. It's also compared to the West, it's relatively cheap to, uh, you know, meals, motel rooms, you know, can, can be uh, uh, tour guides. Even uh, taxis, it's relatively cheap. So once you get there, it's a very affordable vacation. But again, no place, no place like Egypt, and it's uh, you know it's, it's relatively safe. I would say, uh, it's, you know, Egypt is a big city, or Cairo is a big city, but uh, it's relatively safe. Certainly safer than uh, Chicago, if I can say that out loud. <laughs> I, pro so, I could uh, probably definitely agree with that. <laughs> and I've never yeah, been to Egypt. <laughs> yeah, I, we were going back uh, in February, and I was going to lead a tour with Barbara Jean Lindsay, but that was canceled because of COVID. Oh, wow. So we were going to go to all the ancient sites, Old Cairo, the Great Pyramid, Luxor, you know, this, all of them. I actually, uh, so, I believe I've seen uh, that. It's like on, a two-week uh, two two -week tour, but it got canceled. And my co-host for that tour was Barbara Jean Lindsay, okay. and she has a uh, talk show called the, uh, gee, what, what is it now? I've got to look at my notes. I apologize. No, you're fine. You're fine. The Cosmic Oracle Show. Oh, wow. And uh, her website is barbarajeanlindsay.com, and she would have done the spiritual aspect of all these temples and sites, and my, my expertise is more on a technical level, so... Uh, we'll have to reschedule that tour. It hasn't been rescheduled yet. It was sold out. Yeah, I actually, so that was quite a disappointment. It was a tough year that we've just been through. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I actually, uh, I saw something about the the tour with you and Barbara on your website, the the pump dot org. I actually saw something, and I'll put the links for your website and everything. Um, I can even put the links to Barbara's website in the description, so guys, people can kind of keep up with you guys and and see what you guys got going on. Um, do you think you are going to try to reschedule it for, you know, in the in the later dates? I hope so. Um, I, I really do. Um, okay. If with if not with her, uh, maybe, maybe another uh, another host will work out. But we had everything all figured out and it was 
uh, quite a trip. Our itinerary is still on my website, even though the uh, tour is canceled. So it was like about a 13-day trip, and uh, and it was uh, we would have a cruise down the Nile on a large ship, uh, a boat actually. But uh, it would have been it would have been wonderful. But uh, next time we'll have to reschedule that. A lot of that takes. A lot of planning, if you will. Yeah. You know, there's quite a bit of planning months ahead of time, to say the least, with all the logistical issues. So, but uh, someday we'll be uh, going back to Egypt, hopefully with Barbara, but if not, with uh, another uh, another co-host. All right, all right. I look I look forward to hearing something about it whenever you guys get back. Um, let's go ahead and get into the the fun nitty gritty side of things. So. As anybody that follows you on Facebook, and of course I, I see it all the time, you have some serious beef with the Orion correlation theory. And uh, I'll say what I know about it so far. Um, I, I've watched Ancient Aliens since I was growing up, and that is one of the things you hear, I swear, on every other episode. And that is that the pyramids point to the constellation Orion, uh, something to do with aliens, yada, yada, yada. What... Uh, what is what is this the the science behind that and and what is your beef with it? Well, the the Great Pyramid is the subject or the focus of two complete completely different and competing correlation theories. Okay. Uh, at least about a hundred years ago, there was the biblical correlation theory, also known as pyramidology. That theory. Uh, is about a bunch of correlations between the Great Pyramid and the Holy Bible, with the pyramid inch and measuring angles that they've come up with, and fiddling with the numbers. They think uh, they've come up with a whole bunch of precise correlations between the Great Pyramid and the Holy Bible, and they say those people with that correlation theory say that the Bible is confirmed by the Great Pyramid in terms of the birthplace of Jesus or biblical prophecy because of all of these correlations that people have come up with. And also, uh, you know, all these angles and pyramid inch and all of that. So uh, that's one theory of, of correlations. But that theory has been pretty much rejected in the in the modern day age, although it was popular 50 years ago, very popular, but because uh, you know there there's no correlation between the the uh, Great Pyramid and the Holy Bible. You know they they are there's no yeah yeah there's nothing that nothing ties, nothing ties them together. You know there's and then. Now, a prominent theory is the um, Orion Correlation Theory, or whatever you want to call it. And they have come up with some correlations. You know, they take a uh, arbitrary grouping of pyramids and say that it looks like uh, the Milky Way or the uh, Orion's Belt and all of that stuff. And then they say that... Uh, because of what it says in the Book of the Dead or in that type of thing, that the Great Pyramid is some sort of a religious structure, and because the vents supposedly point to stars, that uh, that there's some sort of a relationship between uh, the Great Pyramid and Orion. But, uh, yeah, specific to the Great Pyramid, there's no real feature that indicates that it has any that it has anything to do with stars or or any of that type of thing. Um. So here would I. This would be my question. One, I want to say, uh, one of the the pictures you had posted about the Orion correlation theory and the pyramids, where it was pointing at Orion, but it also happens to be pointing at thousands upon thousands of other stars and galaxies as well that are all right in front of, behind Orion. And I thought that was a good way of saying, well, that why would it specifically be Orion? And I guess people would probably put together the three pyramids, three stars in Orion, and, and try to make it match together. But um, when you're inside the pyramids, is there a lot of hieroglyphs and like art kind of stuff inside of the Great Pyramids? Well, I... 
I appreciate what you're saying. The, there, vent, there are vents. The Great Pyramid has vents. And there are stars in the sky, but there's not necessarily a correlation between the two. Every 72 years, the sky moves about one degree because of the precession of the equinoxes, or also known as the grand precession. So you have vents that point up, but uh, now they're not pointing to stars. So those are two data points that you have. So you can uh, interpret that by saying the original builders are trying to tell us that the Great Pyramid has nothing to do with Orion because they purposely built their vents so they won't point to Orion. You see what I'm saying? That is a good point. That is a good point. Yeah. So they, they, uh, they're, they're not pointing to Orion at all. They're like 60 degrees off. Okay. So that's that's pretty far off. Yeah. I don't know if you're a hunter, but if you're out yeah, hunting you're, deer you're gonna miss that and you're pointing 60 degrees <laughs> off, you're not pointing at the right direction. Yeah. So, uh, but then they say, well, uh, it's supposed to point there back, back when it was built, but uh, the, the, the problem with the Orion correlation theory is they use the same flawed research methods that were used with the biblical correlation theory. And it's not just me that thinks that. There's a lot of circular reasoning, if you will. Let me, let me read a quote from uh, the book, uh, The Stargate Conspiracy. They say, and Baval, Robert Baval, came up with the Orion correlation theory. But in that book, it says, however, some of Baval's assumptions are open to question. For example, he presents a very circular argument that uses the stellar alignments of the shafts to prove the date of the Great Pyramid, but also relies upon the date to prove that the shafts have stellar alignments. And uh, it goes on to say that's classic circular reasoning. So what I, what I don't like about the Orion correlation theory is that it's based on a foundation of some very flawed research methods that have produced these correlations that literally have no causation. So there's circular reasoning, correlations without causation, and a host of other logical fallacies that uh, have put that theory into question to say the least. And another telling aspect is that you can't get anyone who believes the Orion correlation theory to talk about the research methods that that theory is based on. So so it's interesting. I've, I've made some YouTube videos about, uh, about that, made a few memes that I put on Facebook. A few hilarious so, uh, memes. <laughs> And, and it's and it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting subject. There's there's on Facebook there's no groups on on Earth dedicated to the research methods of the Orion correlation theory. You know it's it's like a forbidden subject. So, but shows like yours and others, it has become a hot topic to discuss. You know, you know, if, if a if a great pyramid, pyramid correlation can be, can be valid, valid, can it be, can it be invalid? invalid? How is that determined? I know I that, that uh, precision in 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 the, in the real world, real in real research, research doesn't validate, validate a correlation at all. Precision, precision doesn't. doesn't. Okay. Just because, Just because the numbers match up, it means nothing, nothing in the real in the real world. world. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a correlation without a causation. So it's uh, a, lot a lot of, of fl- and then they think, well, math. Well, math. Oh, oh, there's, the, there's math. the math right there. But math does not, does not validate a correlation. correlation. There's, there's four, 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 sides four sides to the Great, great pyramid. pyramid. Okay. Okay. There's four, there's four beetles. beetles. Okay. Shazam. Shazam. It's a correlation. It's a beetle theory. <laughs> well, it's the beetle correlation theory, theory yeah. So the original, so the original builders were telling, were telling us in this symbolic way that the beetles uh, had, had four members. members. So, so uh, I mean, so, so the math, math is precise and, in fact, and in fact impeccable, but, but uh, there's, there's no causation, causation to, tie to tie the two things yeah, together. So, uh, so it's... So it's uh, uh, it's 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 also, it's also a theory that's in in, in uh, quite, a quite a bit of crisis. crisis. I know a lot of people that are that are uh, rejecting, rejecting it because, because it's you know, you know it's 
the, the, method, the method, the research method is flawed. Well, when you have somebody like yourself that actually can kind of explain it, um, rather than what you would just read on a random Facebook post or a random video somewhere, or ancient aliens, to have somebody actually break it down for you, it, it makes it a little easier to kind of pick it apart. And because I, I didn't know everything you just told me until you broke it down like that. And that does make sense. Normally, people would say the math is the math, but if you're you're talking about a whole entire uh, thing like this, it wouldn't. It technically doesn't mean anything. So um, there, there, that is interesting. A, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. There's a website called Spurious Correlations. You can you can go to it, and it has charts and graphs and math about correlations between things that don't really uh, go together. So. Uh, like, like uh, uh, the, the number of movies Nicolas, Nicolas Cage, Cage has been in, been in and, the and the number of drownings in pools. In pools. You know, they, you know, have, they a have a graph on how, those how those two numbers correlate. correlate. And also, and also the, uh, the uh, amount of margarine that's being, that's being consumed based, based on, uh, they, com they compare that with uh, the divorce rate, rate in <laughs> Montana <laughs> or something Butter like that. Butter is the that. reason so, for your bad relationship. Yeah, yeah, but the the, the math the math the math, the math is really really, really uh, impeccable. They have, they have charts and graphs, but just but because, just because the, numbers the numbers match up, it doesn't mean that it's uh, a, valid a valid correlation. correlation. So, so like but, but you know people you know people can come up with angles on the Great Pyramid, and it, and it, it, it according, according to them, them it'll point to Jesus's birthplace. birthplace. Oh, oh, the Great, great pyramid, pyramid confirmed, confirmed Bible, Bible prophecy. prophecy, but it's but it's it's, it's a self fulfilling, fulfilling prophecy, prophecy, if you will. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, the uh, it's it's interesting, it's interesting to, to, to ask people that believe the Orion correlation, correlation theory, theory if a, if a if a Great Pyramid, pyramid correlation can be invalid, can be invalid. And, that's, and that's that's a tough question because it addresses. In in, uh, in a in a very, in a very subtle, subtle way, way the research, the research methods. methods. Yeah. So, if, so they if they say no, then uh, they're in, in for a world of hurt yeah. because the Great the Pyramid, Pyramid correlation can be invalid, and they don't, and they don't agree with the Bible correlations. correlations. So, uh, so uh, but if they say yes, yes I'll, say, I'll say, well, how do you determine if a Great Pyramid correlation is invalid? Well, then you're talking about research techniques, and they're overwhelmed. But if you're a researcher. You're, you're all, all researchers, researchers are trained in two things. things. The, first the first thing is the subject they're researching, but the but second, the second thing, thing that all researchers are are, are uh, trained, trained in, real, real researchers, researchers is, how is how to conduct research. research. And, it's and it's important because you can be led astray, astray by, uh, by uh, believing logical fallacies and using poor research, research methods. methods. So that's so that's, that's, that's what uh, uh, my gripe is with the Orion correlation theory, or even whatever the next. Great pyramid, great pyramid correlation, correlation theory, theory is. I'm already against it. <laughs> already, I don't even know what it is. I'm against it. I uh, well, yeah, I understand. whatever they make up. I, I definitely understand the, the way you broke that down. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, real quick, I want to give a big shout out to Seth, Christine, Devin, Clara, David, and everybody watching live. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, but on to my next question. So. We, we broke down the Orion correlation and why, why certain correlations are bad. Um, what got to, what, what led you to the Great Pyramid water pump? I, I know a lot of your website and stuff talks about it. Um, you have a few pictures on your Facebook talking about it. What led you to get to that? What research methods, I should say, led you to get to the Great Pyramid possibly being a water pump? Well, well I, read I read the books that... that uh, uh, Egyptologists wrote about, about the big ramp, ramp and the strong back muscles and, and the knuckle draggers, and that didn't, and that didn't seem, seem to fit with the, with the genius that that seems to be uh, indicated, uh, indicated by the builders the of the Great Pyramid, pyramid with, their with their forty-five story skyscraper, skyscraper. And, and with, with the, the Egyptologists, Egyptologists uh, uh, and, no and no one in that, that can make, can make a Great Pyramid casing stone in the manner Egyptologists. Uh, say, uh, say it was done. done. It's, it's uh, first, uh, first of all, it's, it's an impossibility. impossibility. Can't, be can't be done. And second, and second of, all, of all, it's incorrect. It's incorrect. So, so, you know, you know, Egyptology. Egyptology you know, I um, have, a have a gripe with them as well. Okay. But uh, then, I then I read other books about the Great Pyramid being a death ray, ray or, a or a beacon for aliens, for aliens and, 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 a, and a, or, a, or a, a granary, believe it or not, to store either grain literally or to store. 
um, esoteric, esoteric information and that type of thing. Okay. But, then but then I finally uh, ran across a book called Pharaoh's Pump, privately published by a fellow named Edward Kunkel, who has since passed away. He wrote... Uh, uh, the book, uh, the book Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's Pump, Pump, and it talked, and it talked about two, two things, things, and two, and things, two only. things only. He talked, he talked about, about how the Great Pyramid was assembled, and, and um, Orion, Orion correlation, correlation theory doesn't, doesn't even address how the Great, how the great pyramid, pyramid was built. It doesn't, it doesn't even, even, like, we're not, we're not talking about, about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> their <laughs> modus operandi is to find out what points to what else. You know, they can understand all this esoteric... Aspects, aspects of the Great, of the great pyramid, pyramid, but how were stones moved from point A, point a to point B? Can't even, can't even, can't even, can't even address it. it. So, anyway, so anyway, Edward Kunkel wrote, wrote the book, and then he, and then he talked about why it was, why it was built. built. He uh, uh, felt, uh, felt that it was infrastructure for the civilization that built it, and that it was a machine that functioned this Great Pyramid, and that it served a purpose, not not to hold a pharaoh's carcass or treasure, that, Egypt that Egyptologists could steal. steal. That's not, That's the, not purpose. the purpose. And it wasn't, and it wasn't to, point to point to something, something even though it's not pointing to it. To it. You know, you know that wasn't the purpose. But, he's, but he's, he, felt he felt that the Great, that the great Pyramid, pyramid had, a had a huge return on investment, investment even, bigger even bigger than the cost, than the cost to, build to build it. it. So, uh, And he and felt that it was a water pump that transformed the desert into a garden. And it, and it transformed toil into leisure, and it, and it transformed poverty into prosperity. So, uh, I, you know, was, was fascinated by that book, and uh, ultimately started a nonprofit foundation with uh, the title of the foundation taken from his book, The Pharaoh's Pump Foundation. So. Okay. That's uh, that's uh, that's basically how how I got there, and then it became a a life uh, quest and a passion, and ultimately we compiled more research. His book was originally published in 1962, so we have much more research that's been compiled into two books, and also two documentaries. Nice, nice, and those uh those documentaries I have right here on screen. You guys can find them on Amazon. I'll have all the links posted on my page. As well as I, I, when the YouTube video drops, you guys will be able to see all of his books and documentaries. Yeah, for yeah. For some reason, I just looked today, and for some reason, the two documentaries it says uh, out, out, not available, not available right, right now. So I got to find out what's going on. Okay. So we uh, they're on they're on DVD format, but they're they're not quite available yet. So okay. 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 <laughs> for some reason, but the two books are of course soft cover or Kindle ebook format for sure. For sure. Now, um, so I guess I would ask, so the, the, the great water pump, that would be, that would basically imply that there was water all around the pyramids in, in early times, right? Or were they, or were they like welling it out of the ground with the water pump? Yes. Yes. There's a, a profound link between water and both, and both the Giza, Giza plateau, plateau and, and the great, the great pyramid. pyramid. Uh, there, uh, there used, used to be a wall around the Great, the great pyramid, pyramid that existed, that existed up, until up until the 18th century. century. The, the uh, savants of Napoleon, and uh, when he, when he uh, conquered, uh, conquered Egypt, Egypt uh, those, uh, experts those experts did quite a few drawings, drawings that included that wall, that wall around, around, around the Great Pyramid. pyramid. And we think and that, we think that impounded, impounded water, if you will. Uh, Herodotus, uh, Herodotus described, described, described the Great Pyramid as being like a, like a uh, island, uh, island uh, surrounded, uh, surrounded by water. By water. So uh, I, don't uh, I don't know if that was metaphorical or, or uh, allegory or, or if he was, if he was more being literal. more literal. So uh, we think that, we think uh, that uh, myself, myself other, other, researchers other researchers with a technical bent, including, including Christopher Dunn, Dunn feel that the original, original builders, builders supplied, supplied water, water to the base, to the base of the Great Pyramid, at least. And if and not, if not uh, base, just the base, they were able to introduce water to the upper, to the upper end, end of the descending passage. passage. So, uh, so uh, inside the Great Pyramid, the great pyramid uh, was, uh, was a Nile earth, earth discovered, discovered by, by Sir Flanders Petrie, Petrie an, early an early Egyptologist. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, before, before Egyptology, Egyptology went the way that it did. He uh, he, was he was quite a, a, uh, researcher, a researcher, but, but uh, Nile Earth, Earth is like uh, sediment, sediment if, you if you will. He also, he also described being, being inside the Great Pyramid, the Great Pyramid as being inside a machine. Inside a machine. So, uh, so uh, the casing stones, stones the stones on the outside, 
were cemented, were cemented together, together watertight, watertight with a very strong bonding agent. agent. The, the casing, casing stones, stones that are still there are still, are still bonded, together, bonded together watertight. So there's a lot of association between water yeah. and, the Giza, and the Giza Plateau. Why else would you need something airtight like that in the desert? Um, so that that actually makes a lot of sense. Now, with the with the building of the pyramids, do you believe water was involved in, in, in the way of maybe moving the stones? I do. I do. Uh, we, uh, think we think that they that used, used uh, because, uh, they, because had they had water at the building, at the building site, site, they could use, they could that, use water that water to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, use uh, water, uh, water locks. locks. Like those, like in, the those in the Erie Canal, Canal or the Panama, or the Panama Canal, Canal, similar to that, from the, from the Nile, Nile River, River up, to up to the building site. So, so with, that water, with that water, they could lift, they could stones, lift stones up to the building site, building site through a series of water locks, of water locks uh, effortlessly, uh, effortlessly and, fairly and fairly quickly up to the building up site. To the building so, uh, site. Uh, so, uh, so that's, so that's uh, water was certainly involved. And then those stones on barges that came, that came from the Nile, from the Nile because, many, because of the many of the quarries are across the river, uh, they, um, went, up they went up those water locks, went into, went the, into pond the pond and pounded by the enclosure wall, and ultimately, and ultimately built, the built the Great Pyramid level by level. level, by level. Uh, each, level, uh, each level, the casing stones, stones were set in place first, first and, then and then the interior stones. Wow. That is, that is really interesting. It, it gives you a whole different picture of uh, of the Great Pyramids and the the Giza Plateau, when you think about it, surrounded with water and things like that, it really gives you a different picture. But that's that's extremely innovative. Uh, way back when when they were built, if they were actually using water locks and things like that, that's that's pretty advanced technology. You would think for early civilization like that. Well, well, we do. Well, it's. We do. Uh, it's uh... Water locks, water locks are the 21st, are the 21st century of choice to move our, our heaviest objects. objects. Yeah. They, uh, they uh, expanded, expanded the Panama, Panama Canal with larger, with larger water, water locks. locks. They, didn't they didn't use an, 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 alien, an alien beacon, beacon or, they didn't or they didn't hum or, or, contemplate, or contemplate their navel, <laughs> and they, <laughs> and they, they didn't, they didn't uh, have a magic wand, wand or anything, or anything like, that, like that or worship crystals. crystals. They actually had to move bigger ships, so they built bigger water Water locks. So it's, so it's a 21st century method to, method move, our to move our heaviest objects. And I think, and I think uh, in distant, in distant antiquity, antiquity, they used, they water, used locks water locks to move the largest, the largest objects uh, uh, the great, for the Great Pyramid, the, the, components. the components. Wow. Now, um, so when, when you went, you've been into the pyramids and, and a lot of the chambers and stuff. When you go in there, um, are there any hieroglyphs or anything that that kind of depict, or well, possibly you know, depict, depict or refer to any of the water or any of the the technology they might have used to do this back then? One last thing. one last thing. There's a video, There's a video series, series on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel, channel that people can, that people watch, can free watch for free on the assembly, on the assembly process of the Great Pyramid. It's, uh, it's uh, a series, a series, of, series of short videos, videos that, uh, that uh, uh, depict uh, with computer-generated uh, computer generated animations the assembly, the assembly process used to uh, build pyramid, the Great Pyramid water using water locks and barges. Uh, the Great, uh, the great Pyramid has no, has no formal writing inside, writing inside of it at all. Of it at all. So, so there, is, there some is some graffiti, graffiti from, from the, thousands the thousands of people that have been, that have been inside, inside the Great Pyramid through the eons. Through the eons. There, are there are some quarry marks, marks in, the relieving, in the relieving chambers above, above the king's chamber, the king's chamber okay. that, uh, that uh, were, there were there before those chambers were entered in the, in the 1830s by... by uh, Howard Weiss, if you will, if you will. he black used black powder, powder to blast, to blast his, his way into those relieving chambers, chambers. and there were some marks, marks that the, that the builders, uh, builders put on, put on uh, the stones. Uh, stones. Some, some of it is, is uh, like, like, like I say, it's unformal, unformal writing and quarry marks. marks. So there's no, so there's no manual, uh, manual or videotape of how the Great Pyramid was built, no drawings, that type of thing, by the people who built it, certainly. Um, so Nothing. Nothing. now, do you know, are any of the chambers or anything still closed off in the pyramid? Or, well, that's, that's or, a funny, that's that's funny, that's a funny question. Um, um, 
It depends, it depends on, on uh, what you think. What you so think. Recently, uh, recently there, had there had in the last few years, years there's, there's been two different, two different scans, scans of the Great Pyramid. Great Pyramid. Um, one, um, scan, one scan uh, theoretically, uh, theoretically detected, detected an, an internal, internal spiral ramp. ramp. Oh, wow. So that, so would, be that would be a passage that hasn't been entered. entered. So, uh, so uh, if it exists, if it exists. Okay. but, okay. but uh, there's some that some, some put a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, every, uh, uh, they think it they does. Think it does. And, the most, and the most recent scan. scan uh, uh, supposedly, supposedly detected a very large chamber, chamber of, some of some sort inside, inside uh, the, uh, the Great Pyramid, pyramid. and I'm sure, I'm sure your uh, the viewers, viewers know about that. that. They, uh, they used a method, a method uh, with uh, muons, muons, if you will, and then they, and interpreted, and then they interpreted the data, the data of the, all, all of that and came up, came up with a large, large passage near the, near the Grand, Grand Gallery, gallery if you will. Okay. If it exists. If it exists. Okay. But, what's but what's interesting is, is those two, those two scans, scans are contradictory, contradictory to each other. To each other. The, uh, the uh, first scan that detected, detected the, the uh, internal, internal spiral, spiral ramp didn't, didn't the detect the big void, void is, what is what it's called. And the second, and the second one detected, detected the big void, but didn't detect the, detect the, internal, the internal spiral ramp. ramp. So, so there is, there is a, lot a lot of controversy, controversy yeah, that's weird. With, uh, whether or not there, there are, un there are un passages unknown passages and chambers inside, inside the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid, the Great Pyramid gives, gives up its secrets uh, uh, very, very, very slowly. slowly. It's so crazy to me that we're still... We're in 2021 now. People have been looking at these pyramids, and there's still so much mystery behind them. It's like really one of the the world's greatest mysteries to have like a 1,000 percent solid. This is it. This is how it was done. This is what we got. Hey, people, you still have to go there and investigate to this day. People are still looking at stuff. But to me, it sounds like somebody got their their uh, their scans wrong. If they scanned the same thing and came up with two completely separate scans, that to me, that sounds really funky. Well, it's, well, it's, it's, something, it's something to consider. To consider. And, and uh, uh, why one scan, one scan detected only detected what the guy that paid, paid for the scan wanted it to detect. detect. And, the other and the other scan only detected, only detected what that guy that paid for, that paid for it wanted it, wanted it to, to detect. So, uh, so uh, you know, uh, I guess that's fair. I don't know. You know, scans for the agenda. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. For sure. For sure. Um, what kind of stuff uh, were you planning, even though the, the expedition got canceled because of COVID and everything, what kind of stuff were you guys planning on doing when, uh, when you actually got out there? Did you guys have any specific research plans or uh, ideas of what you were, you were really trying to find or look for out there? Uh, well, we were going to certainly look around, you know, that's conducting research and uh, look, at look at something and then uh, think, about think about it. But we weren't going to do a dig or anything. It would be just, you know, not uh, not in, our, in the works for that. It would be, uh, that would be more of a... Um, Oh, you know, oh, you know if I can put it this way, a touristy thing, thing if you will, just people, people that want to see the temples and the, and the uh, old Cairo and go, go you know, float down, down the Nile, and, Nile and we would, uh, we would see, we would see, see all of that. that. But we weren't going to do any formal excavations, excavations by any means, you know. If uh, 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 <laughs> a lot of that, you know, if you, if you pay your money, you can have a scan that'll. Whatever you, whatever you want it to say, it'll say. It'll say it. Or <laughs> if, if, you pay, if you pay money, then uh, you can do a dig type of thing. So, no, we weren't going to do that, but uh, we're certainly conducting research all the time. We have a research facility here at our headquarters in Oregon, and we are looking for a plasma cutter for our uh, research facility. And also, and also a 3D printer. printer. So, so if somebody wants to get involved in that type of a donation, uh, certainly, uh, certainly we're a 501 C3 nonprofit, nonprofit and, we would, and we would certainly put a link from our, from our website to the donor, to the donor or, the company or the company that donated those items. So uh, if uh, that's, that's something that you'd be interested in, in being involved in, involved in certainly contact, contact us through our website. Through our website. But we're, we're, uh, uh, we're doing research and experimentation, and experimentation on various, on various uh, uh, components and sub-assemblies. Sub that type of thing is... is um, probably our, probably most, our most uh, funding, uh, funding intensive, intensive activity, activity, but, uh, but uh, we're, we're making slow and steady progress. progress. Oh, cool. As long as you stick with it. 
Um, so I'm going to jump over to, I got some pretty fun questions from, from some viewers and followers on Facebook. I made a cool little post just, you know, asking if anybody had questions uh, and would want to ask a great pyramid researcher. Um, I told him to drop some questions in the comments. So I'm going to go ahead and read off some of these questions for you, and we're going to see, uh, we're going to see if you can answer them for us. So uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to start with uh, Richard Wolf Good. Uh, he says, does the Sphinx predate the Egyptians who originally occupied the area where the pyramids reside? Would you know the answer? Uh, the, my, the, research my research is about, is about how and why, and the, why great the Great Pyramid was assembled. Was assembled. And, so, and so, asking, so he's asking... A little out of the realm. Uh, he's asking, he's asking when... when Questions, questions about, about when, when was the Sphinx, when was the Sphinx you know, or, you know, predating, or predating, which is beyond, which is beyond the focus of my research. research. And, he's and he's also asking who, who which, is beyond, which is beyond the focus of my research. So, uh, so uh, how's that sound? How's that sound? It's a fair answer. I don't, I don't, it's a, it's a truthful probably, answer. Probably. What, 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 here, here, here's, here's another way to put it. Uh, Egyptology, Egyptology said, that said that the Sphinx and the, and the pyramids, pyramids at the Giza Plateau, Plateau were built within a generation or two of one another. another. They're fairly contemporary, fairly contemporary if you will. Okay. So, so, with Dr. With Robert, Dr. Robert Schock's, Schock's breakthrough research, research who uh, uh, is, a is a geologist and a uh, uh, brilliant uh, fellow, I've met, I've met him, and, and uh, anyway, uh, anyway he, he his research indicates that the Sphinx is much older because of the of the water erosion around the Sphinx, and that's his assessment. And a lot of people agree with him. So he says that the water to make that erosion probably occurred during either the last ice age or that type of thing, which is about twelve thousand five hundred years ago. So so what that does is brings into question. Both, uh, Both uh, Egyptologists', Egyptologists when assessment of when the pyramids were built and also, and also when the Sphinx, the Sphinx was, carved, was carved, if you will. Okay. So, so that, in a sense, in a sense brings, brings the date of the construction of both of those, of those uh, structures, uh, structures uh, back, uh, back much, far, farther much farther than Egyptology, Egyptology um, um, thinks, they, thinks were they were built. So, so uh, that's, 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 what that's what I, I can tell you. Here's another another way to look at it. Uh, um, Egyptology, Egyptology knows about, knows about ancient, Egypt. ancient Egypt, but, but Egyptology can't show us how, how a casing, a casing stone, stone, which is a component, is a component of, the of the Great Pyramid, was made. Was made. They've, never, They've made never made one. one. Hmm. They, said, they said, working people, working people can, do can do it all day long. Oh, we oh, can't, do, we can't it. do it. We're experts. We're, experts. We're, the We're the ones that, that, ones that can't, can't do it. Can do Nobody it. can do it. In the manner, In the they, manner say they say it was done. Large-scale, large scale, extreme, extreme precision, precision is not accomplished using hand tools. No uh, uh, tool mason, mason on Earth, on Earth or, any or any Egyptology has ever made a Great Pyramid casing stone. So, so the reason why, the reason why I, I harp on that is it's just, is it's just Egyptologists, Egyptologists can't even get one, get one casing stone right. Stone right. So, if so if you can't demonstrate that the civilization, that the civilization they think built it can't even build a component of it, of it then, probably then probably a different civilization, civilization built it. So that would have to mean a prior civilization, either, either pre-Diluvian, pre-flood, pre-catastrophe. Pre so uh, so uh, the age of the Great Pyramid is certainly under a uh, huge scholarly debate. Wow. So uh, I wish I could I wish I could tell him the exact date. Now that's interesting. I actually wasn't even aware of that so really nobody actually knows for sure where that was and when you say with the precision and stuff like that if they if they still can't do the precision that almost implies that somebody was better at it before we you know were around well well and imply well, well you said nobody you said knows nobody for knows sure. for sure egyptologists, egyptologists know for absolute, absolute certain, certain. That it was that done, it was using, done a using a specific method, method. Okay. Using, hand using hand tools, tools doryite, doryite pounders, bronze chisels. bronze chisels. 
So, uh, so uh, they, are they are absolutely certain that's how it was done, but they're wrong. They're wrong. Yeah, so, they're saying because they can't do it again. What can you say? Um, what well, what is well, it? They, they, it, can't, it, can't, it can't be done, can't be done, done in that method. So, uh, so uh, it's just a it's chink, chink in their armor to just start, to just start on all the things, things that they say are, are that they say, that they say are, are certainly under scholarly debate. The sequence of pyramid construction is I I don't agree with Egyptology on that, and a whole host of other things, certainly the, certainly the purpose, purpose uh, to, be uh, to be a tomb, uh, how, do uh, how do long open passageways and doors, and doors on, on pivots or sliding, or sliding stones, stones protect, protect a pharaoh's, pharaoh's mummy and his gold, and his gold treasure. treasure? That is true. And I imagine they've probably been broken into before, before it was, yeah, you know. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's a legitimate question. No security. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like a, making a, a safe in a bank made out of glass. Out of glass. <laughs> you know, you know I well. mean, it's, there's no coherent, there's no coherent they, don't they don't have a coherent answer. answer. Egyptology, Egyptology started out as tomb, as tomb robbers. They would steal, they would steal stuff, stuff out of tombs, tombs sell, it to, sell it to museums. Yep. So they have so that, they have that mindset. The, that's the uh, uh, that uh, they if they come up to uh, to, uh, to a to a structure like, like the Great Pyramid, their mindset, their mindset tells them, tells them uh, uh, it's a tomb. It's a tomb. Even though, Even though it doesn't look like a tomb, like a tomb. They, say they say there were several changes of plans because it because doesn't, it doesn't like look it. like a tomb. But it, but, but, it, they it, but they say it is a tomb. So, uh, so uh, and, then they, and then they also say the Egyptologists, the Egyptologists say, well, all, well, the, golden all the golden treasure in the mummy is gone, is gone because, it was, because it was stolen a long time, a long time ago, ago before us Egyptologists, Egyptologists could steal it. And that proves that it's a tomb because there's no evidence for it. That's like saying prove something proves something because there's no proof of it. <laughs> right. Well, right. Well, it's like proving a negative, negative type of thing, and I mean it's it's, it's just uh, it's just bizarre, and and, it, and it's sciences, sciences come and go in the yeah. real world. In the real world. Yeah. Uh, there used to, uh, there be, used a to be a science called phrenology, called phrenology about about uh, the correlations, okay, okay. Between, bumps between bumps on people's heads. heads. And the, zone and the zones in your cranium, in your cranium with, character with character traits. We've all seen, We've all those, seen skulls. those skulls. They're usually They're white, usually with, white the with the markings on them for like anger, anger or whatever. Or whatever. You know, you've seen you know, them. You've seen yeah, them. Yeah. Phrenology. Well, that was well, that was taught in. Uh, in uh, Universities, universities not very long ago, ago. but, but what, happened what happened was the the underlying, underlying pinning of that theory the, the correlations between the bumps, between the bumps in heads people's heads and, and um, character traits, character traits could, not could not withstand the rigors, the rigors of the scientific, scientific method, method and that science, and that science went away, went away. No. used to be used to be taught, used to be taught in universities, universities. and, uh, like, and uh, like I say Egyptology, Egyptology either will either have to fundamentally change or it might just go away as well yeah so uh, you actually, when you were talking about the casing stones, you kind of intrigued my mind. I imagine you don't necessarily have the, the specific answer for this, but do you have a theory or idea about how the casing stones were built so precisely? My understanding, My understanding of the construction of the casing, of the casing stones, stones is superior, is superior to, the to the entire science of Egyptology. Of Egyptology. Okay. okay. Because, because I know that, I know that the casing, the casing stones, stones were, not were not made using chisels, chisels and, hammers and hammers and doriite Dori 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 pounders. I know that, I know that wasn't the way it was done. It was done. Therefore, Therefore my, 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 understanding my understanding is greater than, than, than that of Egyptology. Egyptology. But, how but how it was done is a whole, is a whole nother matter. matter. <laughs> Still a mystery. So, no, so, no. It's, a lost, it's a lost technology. That's why I have, why I have my book. It talks about lost technology. Lost technology. So, uh, that's, one of, that's one, of technologies one of the lost technologies of the Great Pyramid. Great Pyramid. But, at but at least, I don't say, I don't say ooh, they, they hit rocks up against other, each other and then made an ultra-extreme precision. precision. They did it all day long. But, but as an expert, Egyptologist, I can't do it. Understandable. So, uh, understand you understand what I'm saying? saying? Oh, yeah. no, I, I, I understand completely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've got a fun question for you. So, I, I kind of just have to ask this for the channel's sake. We're always doing videos about UFOs, aliens, and stuff. And, and I'm sure you've heard there's a million and one people that will say aliens built the pyramids. Do you believe in any remote part of your mind that the pyramids had, or, or say in general, maybe just the lost technology? could have been influenced through some kind of ancient alien knowledge or, or any is there anything in your mind that would tie those two subjects together 
I could see why, could see why people, people tie the, tie the pyramid Great Pyramid with, uh, with uh, aliens to, uh, to uh, justify its existence. Because the Great, because the Great Pyramid, pyramid is, uh, uh, without, without ornamentation, seemingly, seemingly an ultra-modern ultra structure, structure, if you will, if you will built, in built in distant antiquity, made out of, made out of components that are beyond, that are beyond the scope of human, of human muscles to move, to move in a production, in a production line, line manner. Manner, if you will. Okay. So, so uh, people, say, well, people say, well, aliens did it. But there's it. But there's, a lot, there's a lot of caveats, caveats you got to consider, you gotta consider when you say when you say aliens did it. Okay. okay. Uh, what uh, if you, what, say, if you that, say that? You are also, you are saying, also saying ancient people. Ancient people weren't smart, weren't enough, smart to enough to build the Great Pyramid. pyramid. So that's so that's a that's a good question to ask somebody that uh, that uh, about talks about. Uh, 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 aliens. Uh, aliens. So, so uh, but, where, uh, the but where the technology came from, came from may, be may be indeterminable. But think, but think, think, about, think this. about this: what, 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 what would it take, take to build the Great Pyramid? The Great pyramid? Well, well, uh, a, leader a leader that could fund it, could fund it mm -hmm. like the, like the uh, uh, let's say the, let's Grand, say the Grand Coulee Dam, Dam up in Washington, up in Washington State. State. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, there was a leader, was a leader that was willing to fund it because, because he uh, was, uh, was convinced, convinced that there would, that be, there would a be a justification bigger than, bigger than the cost, than the cost a, return a return on investment. Sure. And, they, and they, uh, for, the uh, for the Great Pyramid, you need somebody that could, a chemist, that could make, that could make very strong bonding agent to glue the stones, glue the stones together. together. And you would need, and you would somebody, need that somebody that could cut large-scale large precision, precision stones, stones uh, quickly. quickly. And of course, and of use, course water use water locks to move the stones, stones water, water, buoyancy, buoyancy barges, barges, and, uh, and uh, some organizational, some organizational skills, skills. And that's about, uh, about all, that all that it would take to build the, to great, build the great Pyramid. So, a few, so a, few, a few geniuses sitting around a table in ancient, in ancient times, times is all it, is all it took. Not, not necessarily aliens. aliens. So, uh, so uh, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm just want, just to, want give to give our, our ancient, ancient ancestors, ancestors, not ancient, not ancient aliens, aliens, ancient ancestors, ancient ancestors credit, for credit for being geniuses, geniuses and able and to, able to uh, figure, this figure this out. Think about, Think about alternating current. current. Uh, Nikola uh, Tesla, Tesla, and it's, and it's, a, it's a very very sophisticated, sophisticated um, technology. technology. Nikola Tesla, Tesla figured, figured it out in one day. One day. That is and, that is pretty and, pretty uh, So you know what about penicillin? what about penicillin? Uh, uh, Alexander, Alexander Fleming, Fleming, who was a botanist, was a botanist uh, uh, in his petri, petri dishes, dishes saw, saw things some going things going on, going on and determined, and determined uh, it was penicillin, penicillin if you will. And, uh, and uh, you know that didn't take very long either. So, long either. so, uh, so uh, it was it uh, was uh, I think uh, more uh, ancient ancient geniuses, geniuses instead, of ancient instead of ancient aliens. aliens I like if, that. if that's okay, I like that. I like that a lot actually. That, uh, that does give them a lot more credit and, and giving some examples of some other ancient geniuses that literally made technology we still use today out of, out of one day's time and thought and, and one small thing, it, that does give it some, some more merit that they don't really tie in together. Uh, I, like I said, I'd always, I've always heard people say it. You'll even <laughs> see memes on Facebook that say aliens had to have built the pyramids. There's no other way. But I, I feel like that's the same thing people do with the Orion thing. It's something they can't explain, so they, they throw a guess out there where they're like, well, it's got to be aliens. If, if somebody else didn't do it, it, it had to be aliens. But, uh, but I, I like that answer a lot, and for the show's, sake, the show's sake, I feel like people will be happy I asked you that. Um, I'm going to jump over to uh, John Marx's question, which you actually kind of already touched on this, but um, he asks, how... How was the desert like back then? I heard in a podcast that water was added to the ground to help pull push the blocks. Is this true? And how was the water stored and distributed along the way? But I feel I feel like you kind of touched well, on that. That's funny. That's funny. You say uh, uh, back, uh, back then, then, which is when. when. when so when pyramid, the Great Pyramid was built uh, is uh, beyond you know the, beyond the beyond the focus, beyond the focus of my yeah. research. But uh, but uh, certainly uh, before, the last, before the last ice age, age it was more savanna, of a savanna. There were, there were uh, other, uh, animals other animals in that area. In that area beside you know, and it wasn't it was a lot. A lot, a lot uh, greener, 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 if you will, than it, it happens right to be now. right now. Uh, there is the, uh, there ancient, is the Lake ancient Lake Maurice, Maurice that, uh, that uh, used to be a lot, lot bigger, bigger 
uh, higher in elevation, if you will, and much larger. Herodotus talks about that, but we think again that the original builders supplied water to the uh, Great Pyramid, and they were also able to use that water to keep water locks full to assemble, to assemble the Great Pyramid, and I hope that individual watches our video series to see how to that, see how that process, process uh, occurred, all, occurred the all the way up from the first stones, clear up to, clear the, up to the capstone, if there, if there was one. Okay, um, so I've got I've got one more question from him as well. He's uh, he's one of my my tried and true followers. I'm always talking to him about all kind of stuff. So whenever I, I awesome. say it, awesome. I'm going to be asking people questions. He's always the first one to jump on it. Um, so he asked, uh, I'm not sure if this will be in your, your realm of research necessarily, because like you said, you're more technical, scientific kind of guy. Uh, this might be a better question for Barbara, but he asked, how close are the pyramids to the 33rd parallel, and what's the importance with other great ancient structures built around the 33rd, or around the world on the 33rd parallel? Are you familiar with any of that? Yeah, it yeah, uh, uh, sounds, sounds like, like uh, you, know, they you know, they are comparing, comparing data points, data points that, don't that don't seem to have a causation, causation if you will. Yeah. So, uh, there's, so uh, there's, uh, there are some, <laughs> there are structures, some structures, or anyway, pictures, pictures on Facebook that indicate there's some structures, some structures on, on the 33rd, the 33rd parallel. parallel. So, uh, so uh, does, that does that mean the structures that are not, that are not on, the on the 33rd parallel, parallel built, in the, built in the wrong place? place. The, Great the Great Pyramid is not exactly on the 33rd, 33rd parallel. parallel. So, so uh, that means that the builders got it wrong and built the Great Pyramid in the wrong place. So people, oftentimes, people oftentimes people don't want to uh, don't, want to, hear don't want to hear that type of thing. So, uh, so uh, because, they, because they, they think the Great Pyramid is, is inerrant, inerrant. There's, there's no there's errors, errors, if you yeah. will. So I'm, I'm, so just, I'm, being, I'm just being having, having fun, fun with uh, him. Uh, here's a good question, here's a good to, question ask. to ask. Is there a feature specific, specific to the Great Pyramid? Great pyramid? That indicates, that indicates the builders intended any relationship between the Great Pyramid and the 33rd Parallel. And, uh, and uh, the the actual, uh, the actual answer for that is no. Is no. no. There is no feature. So yeah. So there's no real correlation between the two. It's a it's a whole separate matter. Not not you put it. You put it. I think you, I put, think it you put it very well. Real no correlation. real correlation. Yeah. Correlations, Correlations are, not are not direct physical direct physical evidence, evidence if you yeah. will. There's direct, there's direct physical evidence, evidence and a correlation is an interpretation of evidence. Of evidence. It, is it is certainly uh, subject to analysis and, and, even, and criticism. even criticism. So, so people, think people think correlations are etched in stone, in stone but, uh, but uh, that, people that people have come up with, come up with but, but, but they're not. They're, they're not. just an they're idea, just an idea a, mental a mental construct. Okay. I like it, man. I, I think you brought a lot of good information out there. That will help a lot of people, you know, kind of understand some of this stuff. Um, but before we hop off of here, I want to ask you, is there is there anything you would want to tell tell the audience, the viewers, um, any type of, I would say, advice or, or information besides going and checking out some of his books and stuff? That's probably one of the best ways you could probably actually get all of his information. But any advice or, uh, or stuff you could tell people that would turn them – on to looking more into the the scientific subject of this and not so much the the, the conspiracy theories behind it. Oh well, oh, you're well, you're asking me uh, uh, what, people what people should do to find out something. Out well, something. well uh, that, uh, that would be describing, describing people as being researchers, researchers if you will. If you will. So, uh, so uh, you know, if, you know, if uh, bear, I, bear, I think that all, think that every, all I'm, a I'm a researcher. I, I just, I just default, default to the position, to the position that, everybody that everybody's a researcher. A researcher. But, uh, but uh, read, read, a book. read a book. You know, if you want, you know, to, be want to be a researcher, you know, don't, you just, know, don't just, look just look at Facebook, Facebook or, uh, or uh, ancient, aliens ancient aliens exclusively, exclusively or, that, or that, that type of thing. You know, read a book, get different get ideas. ideas. Find, 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 find out a book that you don't agree with, read it. Read it. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know that's that's, that's what the revolution of ideas, of ideas is all about. is all not about. Just not just my books, books. Sure. Uh, but uh, but, uh, you know, but read, you know read a book, find, find out something, and, and uh, don't be in don't an, be an, don't an, be in an echo chamber, chamber that, we're that we're all in. in. That's what Egyptology is. They all they all agree with each other, and it's and it's all an echo chamber, and that's why that's why it's a stagnated science, the only science that exists that exists the same as it was a hundred years ago. 
now as it is now because, because they, uh, they uh, validate, validate their, their ideas, ideas on unanimity, on unanimity of, expert of expert opinion, opinion which, is not, which is not science. Trust me. Trust me. But, uh, but uh, uh, look at my, uh, look at my uh, YouTube, YouTube videos. I have some videos about uh, the Orion Correlation Theory, theory. How, the great how the Great Pyramid was assembled, was assembled. and, uh, and uh, some, some other related, related videos, uh, issue, uh, issue about uh, Egyptology. Egyptology. So that's what, so that's what I would suggest people do is, is uh, you, know, the revolution you know, the revolution isn't, uh, isn't uh, we're in a revolution of ideas and of understanding in, 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 almost, in every almost every field, field. but, uh, but you, know, uh, you know, don't go to the street and protest, protest you know, go to, you the, know, library go to the library or, or, or uh, get a book, get a book and, read and read it. So it's, so uh, it's uh, and then uh, and then uh, why I also why suggest people to don't pass don't judgment, pass judgment on, this, on direction this direction of research, of research until until you, uh, you uh, find, out find out a little bit about it. So that that, so that, that would be part of being, part of being a, researcher. a researcher. And if they and have, if they have, questions, they have questions, they can certainly contact us through our website. Find out find out about our mission statement and our activities and goals, and, goals see and see how you can you can contribute, you, can contribute. Uh, uh, you, can, you know you can we take prayers, we take prayers you know if someone wants to, wants to pray for us they can put a link put a link on uh, their, Facebook their Facebook page or whatever, or whatever from our page or that, or that type of thing or ask us a question so, so we have uh, you know we you know we, that, we that's, that, what that's what it is to be a to be a researcher don't just don't just don't just pick out somebody that, uh, that uh, and then say, and then oh, say I oh, I agree with him. With him. You know, the, the, burden the burden of responsibility to conducting research rests on your, rests own, on your own shoulders. And, and uh, again, stay again, out of stay the, out of the uh, uh, Stay out, of the, Stay out of the echo chamber, chamber that, we're that we're all in, and, in. and uh, that's, that's that's a that's rut. A rut. So, uh, so uh, there's uh, there's uh, new uh, ideas out there. Out there. Uh, analyze, uh, analyze both research, both research and, how and how they come up with the ideas, with the ideas. And, uh, and, uh, and then uh, and then reach your own conclusions. So that's that's, uh, that's, what, I that's what I suggest people do. people do. I love it, man. I love it. You guys heard the man. Do your homework. Don't listen to everything everybody else has to say. Do your research. I love it, Stephen. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. You gave some some great information. Uh, I'm going to make sure I put all your links on my Facebook page, uh, in the description of my YouTube video, Spotify. You guys will be able to find all of his links to his website, Facebook, books, and all of that great stuff. So, again, Stephen, thank you for coming on. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike, for having me. For sure, for sure.